watching WTAE TV in Pittsburgh. Can you be a best friend to your child and still be a good parent? And how do you draw the line between the two? That's what Pittsburgh's talking about right here on WTAE TV. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I hope you're in front of a fan or you have air conditioning where you are and I hope you stay with us for the next hour because we're going to try to answer the question, can you or should you be your child's best friend or should you try to be your child's best friend? And when we came up before the show and put the question out to our audience, we got widely varying opinions on that. Starting here, uh, what did you say? We asked the question and you say, well, I think you could be your uh, child's, I wouldn't say best friend, but you could be on a level where you're pretty open-minded and listen to what they say. If uh, I think that's a, the, the, the key is to listen and uh, don't close your mind. During the next hour, we're going to talk to uh, a couple of families who say they have come up with a way to be each other's best friends. And we have a pediatrician, uh, an expert, if you will, who will be able to set some things straight in our mind. But first, let's go to our panel of guests, uh, starting with Norma McIlvaney and her daughter, Christy Sullivan. Norma has been divorced since Christy was just 11 years old, and they both say that they had to stick together, and therefore they became each other's best friends, right? Next, Anna Marie Burkett and her daughter, Karina Burkett. Anna Marie says she's a strong disciplinarian, but she is still Karina's best friend and hopes to maintain it even through those tough teenage years. And finally, Nancy Peters and her daughters, Tanya and Catherine Peters. Nancy is now living the tough teenage years. Is that true? Yes. Tough? <laughs> but she says that Tanya and Catherine still are her very best friends. Let's welcome them. When I was meeting Norma and Christy in the green room before we all began, I got the sense that you two are really pals. I think more so than I've noticed in other moms and daughters. Tell me the story, Norma. How did it start? Were you always that way? Yes, I think so, since uh, she was born. At that time, I was married, and I was living in New York City, and I was, um, my husband traveled a great deal. And Christy really is all I had. And I think it started then. And we got very close, even as when she was a toddler. And I think as she got older, um, we just, we talked, I, we talked, we listened. I, I never, I didn't think I ever wanted to say to her because I said so. It was because uh, I wanted to sit and talk with her and explain why she couldn't do something rather than just say don't. And I think that worked for us. Mm -hmm. Christy, at, when you were 11, uh, they were divorced, correct? Mm -hmm. um, tell me about the change that happened then as far as your relationship with your mother. Well, I also have a little brother. And so we all split. My brother went with my father and I went with my mother, so it went, we really had that separation, so we did only have each other. And my brother, we didn't talk to him, but I talked to my brother. You know, you talk, she talked to him too, but I talked to him differently. And so then I had her, I don't know, I had her all to myself, that's all. And it was, and that's how we grew up. Norma, when it came time to discipline her, was that difficult, establishing your authority? No, it really wasn't difficult. I didn't feel necessary to establish the authority. I thought that was there just because I was her mother, and it was. And I think um, that wasn't necessary to establish that verbally. It was just, she listened to me. I was her mother. We have uh, mutual respect. I don't think she bucked the system very much because I would never yelled, or I tried not to yell. All mothers yell. <laughs> um, and because we, we were just friends, and I would explain to her, I would just sit her down and say, look, I'm not just saying you can't do this because I don't want you to. You can't do this because it would harm you or you don't realize the dangers that it are involved. Never be because I'm the mommy, that's why. Because we always, you know, I always see those t-shirts and say that, and I've never heard that from her before. And that made a big difference. And I listened. I think I listened. I hope I, I, hope I listened. Mm -hmm. um, it, listening was a great deal, a great part of that, because I think at their age, as adults, we think what they have to say is stupid or, or nonsensical or whatever, and I, don't, I didn't believe that. It might be, appear to be nonsensical to us, but it wasn't to her at that age. Let's move along to Anna Marie. You say you're a strong disciplinarian, but at the same time you try to be Karina's best friend. Seems to be a contradiction in terms there. How, how do you find a way to make them both work? I play three roles. I play a mother 
I play a parent and I play a friend. And if you would ask Karina, she can decipher between the three. She knows the difference and she knows what's coming at her at any particular <laughs> time. I'm also a teacher and I think that's where the discipline comes in. I think that by being a strong disciplinarian, I don't mean that I am a mean person or that I yell and scream a lot. I have rules and I expect them to be followed. I think it's with the expectations of the discipline. This is what you have to do to make things go harmonious and this is how we have to do it. And I tell her why. Why is another a big thing. Explaining, explanation and communication. And I don't really have a problem. Karina, can you tell which one she is, whether she's being your friend this day or whether she has to be the mom this day? Can, have mm -hmm. you figured out, how, how can you tell? The way she acts. Mm -hmm. She's how, your best friend? How, how am I when I'm your best friend? Mm -hmm. You play with me and... What else? Talks and listens to me. How about when I'm your mommy? You cuddle me. And, and take care of me when I'm sick. And your parent? Um, you do things that I don't like to do. <laughs> <laughs> that rings true here, I think. Nancy Peters, Tanya, Catherine. You say the tough teenage years. Tell me about them, and how are you? working in this friendship at this time. Well, it's like Tanya, Tanya's now at the point where she's dating and we still have curfews and she's expected to be home at a certain time and she's not. You know, she does get punished for it, but you still have to listen to them because there may be a reason why they couldn't call. I know the other night she went somewhere and, and I, I was, it was like early, she was at a Girl Scout day camp and she was the, to be home. And um, she wasn't home when I thought she should be home. And I got a little frantic as a parent. You know, you're wondering, it's 5 o'clock and she's not home. Day camp's done at 3. And she said there wasn't a phone, you know. So, but you do worry about them in the teenage years. It's, it's really hard, you know. And, and Catherine's just turning, <laughs> she just turned 13. So, you know, she hasn't started dating or anything yet. But it really gets difficult. And you have to listen to them. I really think one of the big keys is, is you have to listen. And you just can't totally close your mind out. And I know there's times you have to remember, I was a teenager once myself. Tanya, do you tell your mother things that you would tell a girl your age, a girlfriend in school? Yes, I do. But um, I have to tell, I tell my mom, I say, Mom, I want to talk to you seriously. I don't want you to be my mom. I want you to be my friend now. And um, I, when I talk to her and we're trying to work things out or something, I, it's like, I say we have to compromise. I want things and she wants things. And they're, all, they're usually on total two different ends. But if we come to a compromise, we're usually both pretty happy like with my curfew and everything. And I've come to my mom with problems that some of my friends have told me, and I say, Mom, a friend of mine, I don't say names or anything, I say, a friend of mine's having his problems, what should I tell her? And she tells me what she would do, and I tell my friend that, and I say, this is what my mom said, you know? And they're like, why do you tell your mom these things? I can't believe you tell your mom things like that. And it's, it's different. I think it started when we'd go visit my grandpa in Lewisburg, and it was a four-hour drive, and we'd do it in one day. We'd go four hours up and four hours back, and we'd be coming home at like two in the morning. And I'd sit there, and I, we'd just like talk in the car, and I think that's when it really started. Catherine, is there anything that you just, no matter how close a friend your mom is, you just could never see yourself talking to her about things that you do take to your friends at school? Sometimes. I know it's hard. To, the <laughs> obvious next question is what is it, but somehow that doesn't make sense right now for me to ask you what that is. So there are things that your friends seem to be a little bit better sounding board than your mom. Yeah. Yeah. You too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think, I think afterwards I get the problems back though. It's like, mom, we did go talk to someone mm -hmm. and this is what they said, but we want to talk to you now too. So you don't think there's too much that, that goes without being I don't think. discussed with you? I don't think, you know. We, we when we come back, family. I'm going to ask you how you think this has helped as far as peer pressure, all of you, how it helped for them to have somebody at home that they can talk to and if that has allayed any of the peer pressure that we hear so much about as being a factor in problems that teenagers have. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
welcome back. We're trying to answer the question, could you or should you be your child's best friend? And let's go to the phones to Monica from McKeesport. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a question for the woman with two children, with the two girls. I have three kids and they're two years apart. My oldest is a boy and my youngest two are girls. They're eight and six. How does she, there's so much competition between my kids that like if I tell one to do one or if I talk to one, the other two get jealous. How does she um, deal with this, cope with the competition? And how could she be friends with one and the other one just sits back and goes with the flow? Can she? Nancy, you want to answer I, that? Yeah, we still have competition in our house with the girls. I mean, they're two years apart, and there is competition. But I think you still have to be, when I'm talking with Tanya or I'm talking with Catherine, I think they, the other one still wants to my attention. But it's like I still, you know, make time for both of them. And, and that's real important that I think you have to make time for both of them. It's hard because I have a son in there, too, and he wants his... <sighs> they're 10, 8, and 6, and it's... I don't know, I do want to be their friend, and I do want to be their mother, and I just can't put it all together. I get, well, I, I get a lot of support from my husband and I know from our family also. And mm -hmm. I think that has a lot to do with it also, that I'm just not out there, you know, by myself. My husband gives me a lot of support also. Uh -huh. Do you have a son also? No, just two, two daughters. Girls. Right. You have a son, Norma. Yes, I do. I'm wondering if it's different with a son yes. and a mother, if that would be harder to do. Do you think so? Yes, I don't think uh, sons, men, communicate the same as women do or as easily as women do. He does more than most guys. My son, age. yes, he has told me my, very. He lived with me till he was nine. He came back when he was about fifteen, and he says that one of the reasons uh, to live with us again when you were still home was uh, it, uh, to talk. His he finds it easier to talk to me, mm -hmm. and, and it just you said about the peer pressure before. He does find it easier to come to talk to me, and he hasn't gotten into drugs or anything. And I, he says one of the reasons be, uh, because that we talked, and he can come to me and discuss it. He doesn't have to go to a friend maybe ha that has more immature views or whatever. We do have the open communication. I really think communication is the, mm -hmm. the answer for it all. I really do. Listening and talking. Mm -hmm. But I don't think as adults many of us actually listen. Chris, did you go uh, through uh, the normal generation gap that most youngsters get to when they get to be teenagers? Did you have that, or do you think that was uh, Some lessened a little bit because of your relationship with your mother? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I can remember saying, Mom, you know, get with it, or, you know, here are the times, <laughs> this is life. But, and she would. Like, she, like I believe she said, um, you just keep, she kept an open mind. It, it was, you know, I had to tell her, that, okay, Mom, I know things have changed a little bit. But then you kind of agreed, and you had an open mind, and... That's how it worked that way. It was nice. Is anybody in the audience struck by how easy this all sounds? The stories from the people on the panel? Because I know in my family and in other families that I know that it wasn't all, I, there were times when I would say absolutely, no, we couldn't be best friends. Right. And that, um, that that might be the more typical. I know back here. Hi. Hi. You're saying this sounds a little uh, untrue or a little too good to be true for you? Well, I had... I have seven kids, and they're, I'm really have almost two families. The first one I was more of a mother to. The second ones I'm, I found out that it, the behavior was a lot different the, with the younger kids when you, when you kind of let them raise themselves, and you just kind of be friends with them, and you don't try to take control, and you don't try to do the things that you did with the first ones. But when you had five under six, you just kind of had to do it that way, and you had to, ha you had to be in control. As they got older, I didn't care for her husband potty trained her, you know. I, I was you were tired. I was not going to go through that again, you know. So that's basically, uh, I think you can be friends with them as long as you don't try to take control. But it, it, they make it sound so easy, and I don't, I think it's a very difficult job, and I don't think parents ever get the credit that, they're, that they deserve. I mean, if, being a mother is just as hard as being a career woman. Do you, uh, would you fear a lack of authority, a lack of, uh, you don't like to use the word control, but a lack of disciplinary action over children if it became a close uh, relationship as we're hearing about today? Um, I, I think it's great, the communication, if you can maintain that, but uh, I, I would hate, I mean, kids are really tough today. Peer pressure is really tough on them. And you, they do need guidelines and they do need uh, a certain standards to, you know, but I think if you can be a friendly parent, let's put it that way. I don't know if you can be a parent and a friend, but a friendly parent, you know. You think that's the best that can be hoped for? That's the best I hope for, yeah. Yeah. Let's take another phone call. Let's go to uh, Jody in Mount Lebanon. Good morning. Hi. Uh, my husband um, is the ver is 
is the one that wants to be best friends with my son, and I have to be the heavy because I'm the one that has to do the discipline. He seems to joke off all the discipline, and uh, what I, my comment is is that I have to agree with the lady in the audience that you have to be a friendly parent. I've had a friend who was just best friends with her parents. Her son is 25 and in jail because she was so friendly with him. He got caught bre breaking into houses, and uh, it's because she was too much of a friend and not discipline him. And, you know, she'd sit down and talk to him and say, oh, don't you think this is wrong? And, and instead of, like, grounding him or something like that, she just ended up being too much of a friend and not enough of a parent. And I think that uh, I end up being the heavy where my husband is, like, joking off the discipline and, you know, making jokes out of things that my son does wrong. And then my son ends up hating me because my son, or because my husband is his best friend, so to speak. So I, I really think that you need to be a friendly parent, and I really think that husbands and wives should get together on this, and I'm working on my husband now. So that's my, the comment I wanted to make. Okay, thanks very much. That sound familiar to anyone? I think you had said that this sounds a little too good to be true. No, I, I think it is too uh, good to be true, because the parent has to have rules, and the main function of the parent is to be able to put the guidelines there for the child, and then the best friend is non-judgmental and doesn't have to judge whether they broke the rule or not it and they don't have to enforce it they can just go along with it and listen and to be the best friend i mean i'm not saying a parent can't be a friend but to be the best friend i just don't think it can work out do you ever feel though that if your child is going to learn about the dangers of drugs or learn about sex wouldn't you rather it come from you and do you think that can be done outside of the role of best friend uh, Yes, I think that uh, I'd like to, them to learn it from me, and hopefully they do. But then, too, they have a lot of interaction with their friends, and I'm not the only person in the world. So it's where I'd like it to come from me, I can't guarantee it. <laughs> I have to go along with what, what they have. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I have to be a friend that way, but still a parent, I have to put guidelines and be there for whenever they want it, whenever whatever I can do to help out. Okay. Let me ask that. Uh, go ahead, Norma. You wanted to say something. <laughs> um, I think the connotation is wrong, if anybody's picking up on that, that if you're your child's best friend, that's all you can you be. You lose the discipline, right. but that's you not true. You can be both. You, mm -hmm. The best friend, you should be best friend. They should come to you first, and not last and only, but certainly first, and get your opinion if they respect that. But you're not just their best friend. There still has to be, as you said, the, the disciplinary, the discipline, the, the other things that go with it. Not just a best friend. That doesn't eliminate you being their parent. It's a combination. It's a tricky combination. And I think it's a fine line, but you can accomplish both. Mm -hmm. You don't eliminate one or the other. Okay. And I'd rather find out from her before anything happens, before I'm confronted with that peer pressure. I'd rather have her already say, okay, this is what's going to happen when you go into 10th grade now or high school now or whatever and that's what helped rather than having to deal with it and come to her then okay. time now I think to hear from an expert we have a pediatrician who will be joining us to discuss all these issues when we come back stay with us Jennings. I've never felt so proud as when I earned my high school diploma by passing the GED test. Call 1-800-62-MYGED and find out how you can earn your high school diploma. It feels great. Mothers Against Drunk Driving, fighting to make our roads safe. to introduce our expert this morning who will try to uh, give some perspective to the widely varying range of uh, beliefs we have about whether or not a parent can really be his child's best friend. Let's welcome Dr. Mary Gessler. She is a pediatrician. She's a pediatrician in private practice with Bellevue Associates in the North Hills of Pittsburgh. And you say what? Well, I, I think that parents need to have a very open line of communication has, as has been brought out by many of the people this morning. I think you have to be very careful in terms of being your child's best friend. I certainly think you can be friends with your child. Best friends gets very challenging and is difficult I think for most people to pull off. You certainly do need to maintain 
the line of authority and be the person who sets the rules and the standards and there's certainly nothing at all wrong with explaining so that people you know, the children understand why I mean that's what you want you want them to to understand why things can or can't be done the way they would like them to be but I think that the person who called in who's having the conflict with her husband is a very good example of the kind of uh, problem that can arise children very early learn if mom says no go ask dad and maybe you can maneuver the situation a little bit and and we have all done that as children and we've all seen our children do that it's important for mom and dad to be on the same page with where they're coming from discipline otherwise uh, one parent feels left out, feels like their relationship is being damaged. Certainly that isn't healthy for their marriage because you, you can't help but get a little angry at your spouse. And I think that potentially the father in that setting uh, isn't taking his paternal role uh, seriously. It, certainly you need to spend time with your children and, and play with them and, and do all of the activities that uh, you feel comfortable with and, and give them the time that they need and deserve but you also have to step back and be the person who sets the rules and, and sets the tone of how the household is going to go. You need a united front between the parents. For absolutely. One thing, right? Communication, though, I would agree with the people who've brought it up before, is absolutely key. Uh, and another thing that I think that has been brought out by several people is that mutual respect. You really do have to listen to your spouse and what their views are so that you discuss without being in front of the children if your view on parenting is different from your husband's, you really need to be sure of that. You don't want to get into that discussion with the child while you're saying yes, they're saying no, and they're going, well, I can probably, <laughs> you know, one plus one equals two. These people aren't going to agree, so I, I have my, my case to make, Kids are so to smart. speak. Absolutely. They figure that out. Uh, and those kinds of issues, I think, are best discussed amongst the parents uh, beforehand. Uh, the parents need to have uh, a common goal with what's going to happen, and they need to listen to their child. You need to respect them. Uh, because they have a lot to say, they have an opinion to express, and I'm sure that the people who are friends with their children would, 100% of you would say, you respect your child and you do listen to them, and you take their opinions as valid. So often parents think that if the child doesn't have a mortgage payment to pay, they couldn't possibly have a problem, and the fact that they just had a spat with their uh, neighbor across the street over something that to us is seemingly trivial, some people laugh off, and that really uh, hurts a child, you know, that's, that's an important thing to them and they need to have that issue dealt with. You say the child is the one who determines what the relationship will be with a parent rather than the other way around? Well, I think that you can, children learn by example and the way that you treat uh, your spouse and the way that you treat your child is what they hear first and, and you often hear the, the story that what you, how you act speaks so loudly I can't hear what you're saying and that absolutely is true in the home front kids are very quick to pick up on contradiction and when you say something to them that is exactly the opposite of what you actually do you'll hear about it back uh, but you can't make the decision that your child is going to be your best friend you have to set up an environment and a relationship uh, of respect for them and they're going to determine whether or not they feel comfortable talking to you let's take a phone call let's go to uh, Sam in Mount Washington good morning uh, yes, I wanted to make a comment. Uh, my son, well, I should say I have three of them. One's a baby. Two of them are my best friends. Uh, I think I'm their best friends. And I wanted to disagree with what the lady was saying before about a boy. Not, you know, it's hard to be a boy's best friend. Um, personally, I think a lot of my friends that have daughters, they try to raise their girls to do what they would have liked to have done when they were younger girls. They don't want their daughters to make the same mistakes, and I think that puts more conflict in it. Now, raising the boys, I think I'm less judgmental on the boys, and I think we're extremely close. They tell me everything, sometimes things that I don't really want to hear or deal with, that, that you do the best that you can. And I think being your son's best friend makes them respect women a whole lot more, because they understand a woman's point of view, and I think that is a lot easier personally. Now, I'm not raising a daughter, but from the way my friends are, it seems like they don't want their little girls to make the same mistakes they have. Or if they stay out too late in different things. With the, with the boys, I feel that I have an, a lot easier time being their best friend and them being my best friends. Okay, Sam, thank you very much. She has a point there. Um, if you want your son to learn proper respect for women, how to treat women, uh, who better to learn it from than yourself, who you believe you have it, the right perspective on that, and you can pass that along. Oh, absolutely. But I, but I think that the other point that she brings out 
uh, is sort of tangential. She really didn't say this, but the catch is if you try to get your child to not make the mistakes that you did, you're trying to protect them, you're cutting off where they are, you're telling them you're making the decision, I would venture to say that the people to my right don't do that. They listen, they may be the sounding board, they may have the rules set up, but they don't make the decision for them. And when you get into that sort of a struggle with your child, they're going to do what they want to do. You can't relive your childhood through your child. And that's what that mutual respect is. Perhaps it is easier for someone who has a woman who has a son because you don't know exactly how, how a boy at, during adolescence felt since that's not what the experience was you had. So you don't have the fear uh, of they're going to make this mistake because their mistakes are going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is a little bit easier setting, but the key is you're not making the decision or you're not saying, I'm not going to let you make that mistake. Part of parenting is letting them make their own mistakes. You know, that we, not that they want to go out, not that you want to encourage them to go out and do wild and goofy things like do drugs, but children are going to make mistakes. We make mistakes every day, and it's how to learn from them and what to do once you've had one and uh, once you've made a mistake and how to cope with it that really counts. Are we blurring? that fine line between very appropriate, healthy, good communication relationships, which I believe all of the people here have, and best friendship. It seems like there's a very fine line between there. I think we probably are. I, I think that the people on the panel probably are very close to their children and have very good open communications with their children, and, and that is certainly crucial to being a very effective parent. But I think that if you ask these children, they would probably say, yes, they have one or two very close friends their own age. And I think that that's also crucial, learning how to interact with your peers and having those established relationships outside the home to bounce it off when your mom does something that you really think is kind of squirrely or when your father does something <laughs> that you think is, you know, uh, a little bit odd. And, and you need to be able to adjust to your own peers. The, the woman who said my, in the room before, my child's always been uh, 10 going on 40, and you commonly hear that, not mm -hmm. just from, from her, but from other parents as well. But you still do encourage her to have peer relationships, right. and it is certainly not healthy to have an exclusive relationship with just your parent, and I, I think that everybody would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to ask you and ask uh, our guests also, what could be the worst of a best friend relationship as far as maybe a parent confiding in a child inappropriate things that a child should not be worrying about? We'll do that when we come back. Stay with us. radio station is playing the 70s. A brand new station is playing a variety of the 80s. A brand new station is playing the 90s. A new station called Variety 96 is playing the best variety of music in Pittsburgh. Try Variety 96 today for the best variety of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Variety 96. More music, more variety. Bid on one exciting item after another as WTAE-TV and the Salvation Army, along with Chambers Development Company, present the Project Bundle Up Auction, Saturday, July 27th. How about a cruise with your friends on the Gateway Clipper? Bid on dozens of items for your home, courtesy of Sears, or valuable celebrity merchandise from your favorite Pittsburgh sports teams. Get super buys and help keep many of your neighbors warm this winter. Saturday, July 27th, on the Project Bundle Up Auction. This morning we're talking about being best friends with your child and uh, Dr. Gessler, at its worst, what could happen in one of these relationships? Well, I believe that the question you asked before the break was things that a parent shouldn't be confiding in, in their child and, and the obvious thing is uh, a separation or a divorce where one parent uh, sort of uses the child as the sounding board for all of the things that dad did wrong, etc. And that is extremely mm -hmm. disruptive uh, and very, very difficult for a child to deal with. Uh, probably the worst thing in a divorce or separation kind of setting is when one parent slams the other parent because mm -hmm. the child's caught in the middle. I mean, they obviously yeah. have love and feelings for both and they just really don't know what to do. Uh, clearly things that are more adult type problems that children at 9, 10, 13 really don't know how to cope with and really don't know how to deal with 
uh, are inappropriate to be leaning on your child for that type of support. Anna Marie, you uh, brought up uh, during the break a concern that we have to define best friends. And uh, again, we're blurring that line between what is just a good parent-child relationship and best friends. Now, you have other friends besides your daughter, correct? Right. I, I feel that, well, first of all, when Karina was born, I did not set out to say, I'm going to be her best friend. Through listening and through talking and through lines of communication, we have become best friends. Uh, but there are many different types of best friends. For instance, I have a best friend that I've had since I was in college, and she's been a best friend for years. My mother and father are my best friends. Best friends, the definition in my, in my thoughts and in my feelings is someone that you can confide in, someone that you can tell anything to, and they will listen, and they will understand, and they will give you their honest opinion, whether it's bad or good. And no matter what you do, no matter how terrible it is, they will understand and listen to you, and they will still care for you, and they will still love you just the way you are. And Do you they won't... confide in your daughter? There are many things I confide in. For instance, she was talking about divorce. I am divorced. There are times that her father and I will still have arguments, and she knows that that's a normal thing. We argue, and we make up. There are times that she has asked me why I left her father, and I was very honest and open with her and gave her the reasons why this happened because I don't think I should lie to her and I don't think I should let her to believe that it's her fault that anything happened. I think it's just a matter of being honest with them. I'm not going to give her an answer that is not a true answer. And that's where the best friend comes in. I am going to say, yes, this part is my fault or this part was his fault or whatever fault, I'll take the blame. But I'm going to let her know that I'm taking the blame. Karina, does that make you feel sad when your mother tells you these things? Mm, sometimes, but usually not. Mm -hmm. Are you glad she tells you? Yeah. How old are you? Eight and a half. You're eight and a half. Okay. Right here. Are you going to ask me my age? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's important to be a child's friend. I don't necessarily think best friend. I think it's important to involve the children in decisions, of, say family vacations, where do you want to go? I think you should ask for their advice. I think um, if they have a problem, you know, they could come over and talk to you about it. I've had some of my daughter's friends confide in me um, little situations in school, and I feel very flattered that they've taken me in their confidence and asked for my advice, because maybe it is good advice now. Mm -hmm. What about that, Dr. Gessler? Better me than someone else? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you'd, you'd rather hear some of the things that particularly adolescents are going to be concerned about or issues that they may raise or their, for example, their best friend, uh, you know, may have a problem that, that uh, you wouldn't want your daughter to be in the same situation for and that your daughter's trying to kick it out. You'd much rather have them talk with you. A lot of people will have their friends, friend, their children's friends confide in them more than their child does even. But I think that there are a couple of issues that are common to what I would consider good and effective parenting and being friends. And two of them she touched on. One is the idea of unconditional love, which is to say, uh, I can not approve of your behavior, but I still love you no matter what you have done. And most people who have truly close friends have that relationship with their friends. I mean, your friend accepts no matter what kind of a fool you made of yourself, they're not going to say, well, I'm never going to talk with you again or be around you again because you made a jerk of yourself. And certainly you want that from your parent, that, that uh, concept of unconditional love and trust that uh, you're not going to tell the whole world <laughs> that this person made a fool of themselves. Uh, and I think that that's really part of effective parenting. And that communication that uh, you know that they will listen. Listening is one of the things that we do least well in our society. It's almost as if you can't wait for the other person to stop talking so you can get your two cents worth in, so to speak. And, and being a good friend and being a good parent means letting that person say what they really feel and not necessarily giving them advice back and not judging what they're telling you but listening uh, and oftentimes they'll actually work it out themselves and that's probably what you've noticed when you listen to your children's friends is that you often don't even have to say anything if they talk long enough they'll figure it out on their own mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Tanya and Catherine in your circle of friends how unusual is it that your other friends would have this close relationship with your mother. Do you see it a lot or not too much? I don't see it too much with my friends. Um, my friends, a lot of people here have said that they don't see how we could discipline, you can discipline your child and be their friend. I think I've been disciplined more than a lot of my friends have. Um, I've always had a curfew. I've always had a bedtime. School nights, my bedtime's the lowest. Everybody's like, 
how can, how can you do that? You know, I'm in bed usually by 10 o'clock, and they're up till 1, 2 in the morning. But um, my friends usually don't have that close of a communication with their parents. They come to school, they're always complaining because I can't believe my mom did this, I can't believe my mom did that, you know. And I, I know I complain about my mom, and I say, Mom, why did you ground me? Why, why did I get in trouble for doing this? But in the long run, I understand that um, I'm going to, in later in life, I'm going to understand why and that it's going to be better for me. Yeah. Is there anything about your relationship with your mother that, that is not so good because you're so close? Uh, I don't think so. My mom, my mom and I can usually tell it what each other's say, trying to say. We don't even have to say it. We can just look at each other and say, yeah, mom, I understand. <laughs> I know what you're trying to tell me. And I think it's better that we are friends than enemies because it looks better when you go out in public that you're not like, she's not sitting there trying to correct me constantly. And I'm like, well, mom, I just want to rebel. I, that's all I, I've seen people do that. You go out in public and you see kids that say, hey, that's my mom. I'm going to rebel and make her look real stupid. I don't want to do that, you know. I like it when my mom comes back and says, hey, Tanya, somebody said, you know, you, you look really nice today or they told me how nice you were and stuff like that. I don't want to make my mom look stupid because I know it reflects back on me, too. I'm sure she appreciates that, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take a phone call. Lori in North Braddock. Good morning. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to make a comment, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm in these so-called tough teenage years, <laughs> and my mother is my ultimate best friend. I can trust her with anything, and I know she won't say, you know, don't do that. She'll tell me it's my life. She'll show me all the options that I have. And she'll tell me to make my decision because she knows I'll learn from my mistakes. And she trusts me enough to know which way I'll do. And if I do make the wrong choice, she'll be there to listen to me, saying, you know, well, it's still okay. You know, I still love you. And I'll always be here for you to listen to you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gesser. That just sounds like a good parent-child relationship, not necessarily best of friends. Right? Absolutely, but it, it does get very sticky to define because if you have a good relationship, you have somebody that you trust, that you love, that you feel very close to, those are all the same emotions that you have with someone that you are best friends with. Uh, you know, as I say, I think that the key catch is making sure that, that you have, as these folks have done, that you still have the rules and the guidelines that, that the children Obviously, this group of people recognizes that the way to be friends is not simply to say yes to everything that the child wants. And I don't Definitely think anybody on this panel has really done that. True. I really don't get the <laughs> yeah. sense that that's the, but that's the way some people approach it, like that one caller who called in. Clearly, the, the husband who was trying to be best friends is trying to do that by just saying yes and spending all of his time playing and not ever saying no. That is a totally different um, type of relationship and not a good discipline. one. You really do. Yeah. And one that would make you say to that husband, you don't get out enough if your <laughs> best friend is... Particularly that you don't get out enough with your wife. With your wife, <laughs> exactly. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back in just a minute. Stay with us. We're back. I wanted to doc, uh, ask Dr. Gessler, in the scheme of society moving on and people um, growing up and having progressive thoughts and, and the whole thing, I mean, where does that generation gap between kids and their parents come in handy? And I'm sure that it does. It's necessary, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, a normal part of adolescence is to rebel. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to dye their hair purple or spike it or do, uh, you know, uh, odd things to their body. But sooner or later, you're going to question what your parents' values are and whether or not those are the ones that you want to have. And how effectively you see them living their life clearly is going to be some part of whether or not you're going to accept that. I mean, if, if parents are trying to set an example that is different from how they actually live, you're going to question that a lot more. But that's a very normal part during those difficult teenage years, and that's what makes them difficult, is that person is trying to establish their own independence, think for themselves, figure out if this is what they really want to buy into, or not and we need to do that and we need as parents to let our children do that because if we don't if we try to make all the decisions for them sooner or later you're going to have a very big rebellion and one that it will be much more difficult to try and uh, contain and don't be disappointed in yourself as a parent when that stage comes in your child's life if you have been best friends or very good friends until that point that just is going to happen right? absolutely and, and the key age is usually 13 when it really, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really that's starts true. to uh, doesn't mean bad kid doesn't mean bad parent absolutely not yeah. Over here, you got the microphone. Go ahead. You wanted to say something? 
Oh, yeah. Um, I had a question for the girl in the polka dot jumper. <laughs> um, could you say that you could be your mom's best friend? I'd say I'm my mom's, one of my mom's best friends. I'm not the only best friend she has. My mom tells me some of her problems, but they're not on real high levels that I'm not going to understand or I'm going to feel bad later and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's going through that. My mom, my mom and I, we communicate and uh, I think, I, I grew up with my mom. I didn't grow up with babysitters and everything. And that's, I, some people say it's a problem with me. I have been more, I've been disciplined more for older people. And I, I think that's why my mom and I are really close is because I grew up with older people. I went out with her and I know who her friends are. And when she talks to me, I know what she's talking about. I'm not like, what are you, I'm not out in left field thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going out on a date tonight and she keeps talking, I'm never going to make it. <laughs> I actually sit down and listen because I know later on she's going to listen to me. And I think I am one of my mom's best friends. Quick comment from your mom. Yes, um, this is my daughter here. <laughs> I, I kind of feel as the first lady in the peach um, outfit up here felt that, you know, you really, we really have to respect our child. We have to listen to our child. Um, she is my only daughter, and we have grown up together, kind of. My, my husband works kind of out of town, and he's on the road a lot. So, you know, we're there for each other. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have any brothers or sisters to be with, and you know, it's but we talk and we communicate a lot. And you still discipline her. We still, oh, very, right. very That's much. I discipline, and she does listen. She's a very. That's our biggest to me. point: is discipline. And people don't like you know. You were saying you don't understand that. It's just like. I can remember growing up thinking, oh my God, I'm going to go home and she is going to rip me to pieces. She's going to rip my head off, you know. And she would, I'd come home and she would just lay into me and I'd start crying. She'd start crying. Now, that was done. Now tell me why you did it. You know, she still was there. That was really stupid. You were really jerking. I got grounded. I got yelled at. But then it was, okay, so why'd you do it? You know, it wasn't just like you're stupid. You know you're not allowed to do that. Go to your room. It was still more into it. And I didn't get... I've never had trouble with my daughter telling her to go to bed. She always goes to bed when I tell her. She well, listens agree to me. Her. I agree with her. I agree. We're going to get into it. Yeah, I agree. With her. <laughs> okay. Always yell at me, but not in front of my friends. That's yeah. Right. right. That's the That's big right. thing. That yes. really is Thanks, because thanks. you don't want to be embarrassed. And you, you know, when your mom's your friend, you want want her. You want want like she said. You want want to make your mom look stupid or make her look like a fool, so and she wouldn't do that That's to not, you. That's right. That's okay. Let's right. take another phone call. Colleen and Imperial. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to just comment on Christy and her mother's relationship. I was in her wedding and she was in my wedding and, and we've been very close for quite a long time. And I've also been very close with Norma and I'd like to just comment on how much I respect their relationship. And I have a four month old daughter and I really hope to emulate the relationship in my own, in my own life. I'm really struck by one thing of all the, the families, the moms and the daughters, and that is that it just seems best friends or not, and if you'll agree with me, Dr. Gessler, they seem to have good working relationships in their families. Oh, absolutely. And I think that one of the things that Christy brought up is really key. You know, you did something wrong. You knew you were going to hear about it. You knew she was going to be angry. You dealt with it, and it was over. Right. You didn't save it in the archives for past history that the next time you did something, it was... You know, you've been doing that for five years. Aren't you ever going to learn? I doubt that the people on the stage really do that a lot. You know, you have to discipline for the event and then let go and of it. it. And that's a really important skill with, a, with parenting effect. In the last couple of minutes we have, I want to go down the line and just hear from the moms now. If you would give one brief piece of advice to the, the families watching and those in the audience, what would it be as far as maintaining a, a good friendship with your children? Norma? I definitely think if you can wrap it up in one sentence, it's to listen to them. Don't think what they say is foolish or dumb or a uh, different generation, the gap or whatever. Listen. Anne-Marie? Being a friend to your child is above and beyond anything else fun. It is enjoyable. It's a wonderful experience. And it also gives them a good role model with their peers. Nancy? Um, have trust in your children. Uh, trust their judgments. I, you know, I know both of mine have done things that have been foolish. And, you know, we, we talk about it, but have trust in them and communicate, talk to them and listen to them. I know at times Tanya will say, are you listening to me? And, and it's like I put down what I'm doing and say, yes, let's talk, I'll listen. Because you can't be cooking dinner or peeling potatoes or something else mm -hmm. and listening. You have to put everything else on and listen to them. We have a little more time. Go ahead, Tanya. What's your advice? I agree with my mom. I think you have to trust. Um, she's got to trust me and I have to trust her that she's not going to go out and tell everybody what I'm telling her. I really appreciate my mom, and she's always been there for me, no matter what I come home with. Catherine? I always trust my mom because she, like, helps me with my homework when I need help. That's 
how she gets to be my best friend. Is she good at math? <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> you are, okay. Just wondering where the math homework help comes from. Dr. Gessler, final word? Well, I would kind of summarize everything that people have said and say that communication and mutual respect is really what you want to teach your child. And that's the best way to set an example for them and to have them uh, emulate uh, your behavior toward them. If you don't respect each other and you don't have an open line of communication and you don't listen, you won't be able to have the kinds of relationships that we've heard about this morning. Yeah. Karina, what's your favorite part of being with your mom? What do you like to do best? Um, when we do things together by ourselves. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing? Um, Maybe like when we play games or talk with each other. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for joining us and Dr. Gessler as well. One more question. Is it appropriate for young children to spend time with the parents, friends? Maybe yes. more time than, or the same amount of time as, is that a, uh, I am very close to my best friend's children, uh, and, and I think that they really, in fact, one of them complained the other day he had a, a choice of some place to go, and he said, but I have...